your words become your reality. You are where you are today in part because of what you've been saying about yourself. Words are like seeds. When you speak something out, you give life to what you're saying. If you continue to say it, eventually that can become a reality. Whether you realize it or not, you are prophesying your future. And this is great when we're saying things like, I'm blessed, I'm strong, I will accomplish my dreams, I'm coming out of debt. That's not just being positive, you are prophesying victory, prophesying success, prophesying new levels. Your life will move in the direction of your words. But too many people go around prophesying just the opposite. I never get any good breaks. I'll never get back in shape. Business is slow. I'll probably get laid off. Flu season is here. I always get it. They don't realize they are prophesying defeat. It's just like they're calling in bad breaks, mediocrity, lack. You can't talk defeat and expect to have victory. You can't talk lack, not enough, can't afford it, never get ahead, and expect to have abundance. If you have a poor mouth, you're going to have a poor life. If you don't like what you're seeing, start sowing some different seeds. You can't do this. It's impossible. It's never going to happen. Just give up. Just settle. It's not meant. Accept the fear. You're not the one. They're just better. You're too weak. No one wants to hear you. Try something else. No one likes you. Just follow. Do like everybody else. Do it the easy way. Accept being broke. Quit dreaming. What are you doing? Why do you have to be so damn different? We all have this negative self-talk that goes in our head. Guess what? There's enough people that are telling us we can't do it, that we're not good enough. Why do we want to tell ourselves that? We know for a fact that thoughts influence actions. We saw it there with the, um, with the video Sheldon, Dr. Levy showed, right? We know that our thoughts influence actions. Why do we want to say that negative self-talk to ourselves? We need to get our own self-affirmations. Muhammad Ali, what was his self-affirmation? I am the greatest. Who else is going to tell you? There need to be quiet moments in your bedroom, quiet moments when you're brushing your teeth, that we need to reaffirm, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. That is my affirmation. It, if I don't believe it, no one else will. How do you build self-confidence? Get away from the people who will tear you down. There's enough of that. Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. There is no one better than me. It's a difference between hubris and ego and false pride. It's just reminding yourself in quiet, silent moments. I put it down on a list. It's right beside my mirror, right? About all the things that make me who I am. Because I make enough mistakes and the newspapers will recognize it and people around me will recognize it and they'll tear me down and pretty soon I'll begin to believe it. Stop the self-talk, the negative self-talk. If you'll watch, you'll see some athletes, they'll have a little bandage or a little um, brand around them. Uh, Lance Armstrong's a perfect one. What's his self-affirmation? Live strong isn't a brand, it was to remind him of who he was. Live strong. Then it came a brand. He would move that from one arm to the next arm when doubt and fear came into his mind. Live strong. Put it on there. Let's go. We'll all have it. Replace it. I believe passionately that we can shift the negative voices and stories that are going on in our minds into positive ones. How do you do that? Well, there's three main questions. The first question is, is it the truth? Is whatever I'm sharing with someone or what you're hearing from someone else that's giving you feedback about your life true? You know 100% that it's true. First question. Second question. Is it necessary? Is what I'm saying to myself in my head, is it necessary in the exact moment in what I'm doing with my life right then? And the third question is, does it improve upon the silence? Somewhere deep inside, you know what kind of person you were designed to be. If you want to produce great acorns, 
Think like an oak, not like an acorn. Think like the person you intend to become. Like the Christian question, what would Jesus do? Ask yourself, how would the person I'd like to be do the things I'm about to do? So let me ask a question. What kind of seed is in you? Figure out who you are. Don't apologize for who you are. And then become even greater than you naturally are at what you are. If I could give you one thing to take from this, it is no one will believe in you unless you do. Listen to the words of that video. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes. We're supposed to be different, folks. And when people look at us, believe in yourself.